We are continuing our discussion of the 1998 film Beloved. Now that we've already covered what happened in the movie versus Toni Morrison's Pulitzer Prize winning novel, let's talk about Setha and the heartbreaking decision she made. Can any of you imagine deciding that it would be better to end you and your children than to see them return to bondage after escaping the freedom pre-Civil War? I'm Height. And I'm Cherie. And you've discovered Axiom Amnesia. We want to thank all of the supporters who helped to make this video possible. If you want your name to appear alongside these contributors, make a one-time donation via Cash App, or you can head on over to patreon.com slash axiomamnesia to enjoy all of the benefits of becoming a monthly subscriber. So we've already done a video explaining the story of Beloved and what happened. So check that out if you haven't already seen it, or you can just uh, listen to this. But if you want more detail and background, listen to that video. We also did kind of some high level discussion and commentary, but nothing too deep, which is why we wanted to do this second video. So it's important to note that Beloved is a novel inspired by the true story of Margaret Garner, who escaped with her family from slavery in Kentucky to freedom in Ohio in 1856. When U.S. Marshals apprehended the family under the Fugitive Slave Act, Margaret Garner killed one of her children, a daughter, rather than see her enslaved again. Keep in mind that the Fugitive Slave Act of 1850 required that slaves be returned to their owners, even if they were in a free state. The act also made the federal government responsible for finding, returning, and trying escaped slaves. In the story, Setha ran away from Sweet Home Plantation in Kentucky to freedom in Ohio to live with her mother-in-law, Baby Suggs, just before the American Civil War. About a month later, school teacher, basically the overseer at Sweet Home, finds Setha in Ohio and intends to return her to servitude back in Kentucky. In a complete panic, Setha takes her children to a shed and fully intends to send them all to the upper room. Beloved is a crawling sized baby at this time and Setha slides a knife across her throat and she's ready to do the same to her other three children bashing in their heads and other stuff. Two sons uh, who were older than Beloved and her infant daughter, Denver, to whom Setha gave birth during the journey to freedom. Someone intervenes and takes the other children to keep Setha from doing the same to them. But Beloved was already gone. Setha had taken the life of her own child to save her from the horrors she would surely face if she was returned to slavery. We really have to reiterate that this loving mother who managed to escape a Kentucky plantation where the unimaginable atrocities took place enjoyed only about a month, actually 28 days of freedom with her children before the overseer school teacher arrived in Ohio to take her and her four children back to Kentucky. So this brings us to the issue central to the story of Beloved. At this point in the story, Setha has a choice to make. Should she have gone willingly with schoolteacher back to Kentucky? Should she have tried to run with her babies? She surely would have been caught and forced onto the wagon back home. As viewers and readers of this story, we are left to see that Setha was in an impossible situation. Nevertheless, how are we expected to look upon Setha's decision to spare her children by taking them out with empathy when the act itself was just so heinous? So Toni Morrison makes a reference to the idea that, quote, it was the right thing to do, but she had no right to do it. Right. And in a New York Times article, they interviewed her about this. And she says a few things, starting with it was absolutely the right thing to do, Miss Morrison said. But she had no right to do it. I think if I had seen what she had seen and knew what was in store and I felt that there was an afterlife or even if I felt that there wasn't, I think I would have done the same thing. But it's also the thing you have no right to do. The article goes on to say one of the nice things that women do is nurture and love something other than themselves. They do that rather nicely, instinctively. Perhaps, but they are certainly taught to do it, socialized to do it, or are genetically predisposed to do it, whatever it is. It's something that I think the majority of women feel strongly about, but mother love is also a killer. Mother love displaces the self, Miss Morrison says. The precious interior, the loved self, whatever that is, whatever vocabulary you, just, you ascribe to it, is suppressed or displaced. 
and put someplace else in the children, in the lover, in the man. It's always something other that is more valuable, more beautiful, more wonderful than the self. That's too bad, but that's the horns of that dilemma. Sometimes people say, well, your children become yourself, but it's not that. It's just that they become what she says in the book. That's the best part of me. That's what maternity is. So you can do some rather, and this is Toni Morrison still talking, so you can do some rather extraordinary things if that's what you really believe, Miss Morrison said. You can really control other people's lives. You can tell them when to move and what to do. And, and part of this is parental obligation, and part of it is excessive. And this woman did something during slavery. She was trying to be a parent and a mother and have something to say about her children's lives in a slave system that said to blacks, you are not a parent. You are not a mother. You have nothing to do with your children. And so I thought that that really kind of embodied the way that Toni Morrison, the woman who wrote this novel that became the, the film, thought of the decision that Setha made. A, yeah. she says it's the right thing to do, but she had no right to do it. Like, let's unpack that first and foremost. Okay. What do you think? I Is think it the right she's thing wrong. <laughs> it's the right thing to do, and she has a right to do it, basically. Ooh. But if you don't, so this, the whole context of the thing is incorrect. So I can't remember the name of the series. It's a series where one of those big, uh, or those known black actors, she, I don't know, she, I don't even remember, but she's working for a white family or something. I don't even know. It was a few years ago. But basically, what choice do you have? If you're in this situation in the United States in that time to any decision you make, you don't even you don't really have the advocacy to make a decision on your own. Right. So to judge the uh, the decisions and choices that people make while they're under this system that was going on at the time is just even wrong for me to do. Like the deciding, oh, whether she did this or that and she don't have the right to do this. What she had no rights for anything. Mm. And as a matter of fact. So I can't even judge whether or not she had the right to do because also she didn't have the right to do anything. Hmm. Is that any statement? What is that for me to make that statement when you, she don't even have the right to be a parent, to have children that she advocates for in all of this? Right. Hmm. So if I'm going to further condemn her because of some mythical ideal of rights that is only bestowed upon you by a corrupt government. Hmm. Hmm. Right. Or are we just talking strictly morally, strictly morally? What do you do as the second class citizen, subservient, not even citizen, subservient being right an oppressed person in this system? Well, and, and let's just say, too, like it's so hard because I, I think about like this idea that morally like we don't have the right to take somebody else's life. And then that doesn't jive with how I feel about what she did. Because given this and given who our ancestry, you know, what our ancestry is here in this country, like the desperation that it must have, that, you know, that yeah. anybody would have to be in to make such a decision. Because cause, cause could any, any parent, any mother, anybody imagining being a mother or a father or a parent even imagine being able to do something out of that like that and then be like it because it's out of love because I can't let you go to what I came from and what the the three of those four children had already come from and experienced on some level. Yeah. And I think it's easy to say, looking back, that I should be allowed to endure U.S. slavery. Right. Because that was the choice that was made. Should. Is it right for her to basically not allow this? Right. So I'm looking and I'm like. I don't think that a child of mine should have to endure that which I have been through. And none of us alive have been through that. Right. Heard. So it may be best if she does it right, which makes it her right to decide for the one. You know, like, but I just I don't know. But I in can't a world even... where your children are not yours, like, let's just think about yeah. in this world we live in today. How many times, you know, like, just read social media. I don't play behind my kids. Right. You know, like people feel that they own their children, that their children are them, that they are their children. And even Toni Morrison touched on it in a little piece that, you know, we read from the New York Times where she's trying to explain just the how big this is right. and put it in context. 
the, Setha had no control over her children. Yeah. So they it reads hers. It reads as she doesn't have a right to destroy Masa's property in that complete context. Mm-hmm. Right? So yeah. that's what just that, that's where my disagreement comes from. But yeah, I but when you talk about what's right to do and what someone's right are, are those in line? Should they be in line, right? Well, I think that it was a clever thing to say because of the play on the words. And, and, and so that just made it convenient, maybe even, you know, to say, hey, yeah. it was the right thing to do. You had no right to do if it. If you just, have you know, no right to do something, then I don't think it's right for you to do it. Hmm. So, Y'all you know? go to the comments because <laughs> when I tell you and I told you that how emotionally charged this this film and this book was for me. And like I just get in my feelings with this conversation because I feel like especially the part about what Toni Morrison was saying that like this system is saying you have no right to be a parent. You don't get to control your children. And kind of the interesting thing about what Setha did was actually trying to control what would happen. And in this case, was it bad that she wanted to control this? Hmm, yeah. Do so, you guys have trouble finding empathy for Setha's position to say, I'm going to take this child out. I can't, you know, and, and I don't want to ask y'all what you would do, but what would you do? The slave master is outside and he waiting for you and your kids to go back to what Setha had already faced and worse. And to know that out of your four kids, just like baby Silks, her mother-in-law had eight kids and only knew what happened to one. Huh. Only knew the whereabouts finally of one of them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like. Well, what did they show in the film? Right. In the film. They show <laughs> like, no, what did they show for the reason she would do this? Right. Not just not what happened. Right. So it has to. So if let's say I don't know anything else, I don't know American history. I don't know nothing. Right. I'm watching this movie. What has me agree with Setha? Right. That would say, OK, I could see why she would do this. The one could only conclude. That whatever she came from was so bad that she thought this was a reasonable thing to do. So what happens is we know she escaped and, you know, they show you the bad things, some of them that happened to her and just the fragmented nature of her life. And, you Hmm. know, that this seemed like a better option than going back to Kentucky. Yeah, I guess. Well, it's not about going back. It's about the kid going, right? Or the kids. All of them. They all yeah. were going to have to go, right? She did. She was going to take, she wasn't going. She was going to take them out. No, but take it's really out. about, we're talking about what she done to the kids, right? Right, yes. So, yeah, it's about what they would endure. So what if she hadn't, okay, what if it wasn't about the kids? I mean, I want to get back to the subject of the kids. But what if it was just about her and she saw up, they coming up the street, I'm going to go, you know, jump off a cliff. Or I'm going to go, you know, like, I'm not going. This piece of, quote, property that you've lost, it's over with. Hmm. Would you, would people feel differently about that? Yeah, because so we have the stories of people jumping off the ships. We have other stories of people doing stuff like this. And like I say, we haven't been in that position. So if it is okay for one self, could it be okay for, you know, deciding it for the children? Because, hey. Well, we decide everything else for kids, right? Yeah. Well, I think that's what she, in those quotes, what she was kind of talking about. So uh, this, is, this is where I think the movie was really good. Because if y'all go back and you watch the scene, even though it's absolutely heartbreaking, if you watch the scene where, you know, she sees and begins to panic and then, you know, they hear sounds coming from this shed where she is as these folks are coming to take her back. They're like, oh, OK. And then you see all of the other black folks around standing around looking and, you know, to figure out what's going on. And then they go in the shed uh, and they see that she's, you know, beloved is in her hands already in her arms already being, uh, you know, having had her throat um, sliced. And then. Denver, she was also holding Denver, the, who was an even younger baby than Beloved at the time, because Denver was a newborn and uh, probably like a month old. And she flung Denver and was about to bash her, you know, in. Hmm. And a man 
uh, one of the other men there caught the baby. And that was the only reason because she had already knocked the other two boys out. So she was trying to do them in as quick. Because think about it. She's trying to do this quick. Hmm. So she just slinging yeah. them up against the wall. Just, you know, I mean. And so then it brings me to the question of, like, was Seth illegally insane when she did this? Would you consider that well, insanity? Do is everyone in bondage? Hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. It's like that's the whole thing. And we brought it. I brought it up in the other video. Right. Like just all this stuff happened to all these people and everybody in the story has trauma because of the situation that you're in. That's why I'm saying like there's any decision they make. Can we hold that person to account? Right. But I think of is th the moral question, you know, does it account for the religion? As taught by the oppressors, right? Because he's like, okay, so maybe somebody could say there could be hope, right? Even though there was no end in sight. We know that the end was soon of slavery. Yeah. But the people who's living it didn't know that this would end in 1860 right. something, right? Right. So there was no end in sight and a religion as taught by the oppressors, right? Because that they wasn't reading this that when I, I have this book that was written and i'm reading it and this is my understanding of religion it's that these people who are doing this to you telling you these are your morals and this is how you should be right so but we can take it today and be like oh i've read the bible so i know that she shouldn't do that to her kids and all this other stuff right but there were people at the time who would believe it oh because of this religion you know and this is you know what god says or whoever right as told to us by maybe the traveling preachers or even by the people who claim that they own us and who is enacting this violence on us Right. Do you consider that? Oh, that's why other black people who are there like, OK, what's what's she doing? Why is she doing this? Right. Maybe they accounted that and that was part of it. Well, and then the other thing I wonder, because after Setha does this and. And she goes through, you know, they don't arrested her and did whatever. And, you know, so eventually she winds up still there back with her daughter and her sons, um, you know, the one daughter she has left and her two sons. And they're still living at that same house and whatever. So it's not like she went to uh, prison for the rest of her life where they sentenced her to death or anything like that. But the ostracization that she experienced for the community yeah. judging her from what she did. But see, what you got to think about is had she what if she had done it on the plantation versus in Ohio, the free state? Because ah. see, the people who were in Ohio judging her and looking down their nose on her, you know, uh, actually, uh, I think I, I always get these two confused because I don't know if it's the uh, nurse from um, South, South Central or if it's Big Mama or if they the same person. Because, you know, you and I always have that debate whether that's. Oh, no, that's not the uh, same person. <laughs> I think. But she is one of the um, townspeople in this movie. And. She uh, is looking down her nose at them. You know what I'm saying? At uh, Setha and her family yeah. after what has happened. And so are the rest of the folks looking around like, you know, yeah, so like you just this woman is wild. Right. She crazy. Like we do now. Right. Mm -hmm. So like were they born free? Because some of them. Right. Because that was a lot of people escaped and then had lives. Right. right. And, and then they are the new ones. Sort of like in Roots. Y'all don't want to watch Roots. But right. When uh, when Kunta gets to america right. or the colonies right? right and it's like oh what they're looking at him different like hey y'all don't know what freedom is right mm -hmm. and she's coming up like dang y'all might not even know what slavery is like. right right you know you you know like there so so think about what life might have been like for the different black folks right if you were black and you were living in um a free state yeah you experienced prejudice yeah you experienced all of this yeah you encountered slaves um or enslaved people who had run away and you know uh were first generation people who were free but you may not fully appreciate yeah why you might be saying stuff like, like this i'm not my ancestors <laughs> you, know? <laughs> you might you know? be saying that and you ain't endured nothing like that which brings me to a very current conversation and i don't know why this is just my stream of consciousness with this but i was thinking about um ta coates and his recent book and the discussion surrounding that and the message, um, the message. Yes. And the discussion surrounding that, because he's been getting a lot of backlash because he uh, did a portion of his book. Oh, I said the word portion. He, <laughs> uh -huh. but he did part of his book 
on, um, you know, what's going on over there in the Middle East and whatnot and um, how he kind of rolled back some of his ideas that he had previously. Uh, But another thing that he kind of discusses is the fact that he is a child, as he said, of Jim Crow and his experiences here and seeing parallels between the way people's Uh, In America, his people had been treated historically and what he sees around the world today and why it's not cool, why it's not okay, and um, all of that. And so if y'all are not up on that, you should be. As a child of Jim Crow, it's that his parents were? Yeah, his parents were subject to that. And, you know, um, I I think that that's, you know, probably it. Because, you know, if you are of a certain age, then, you know, your parents lived at a time where they might not have been able to. Yeah. Drink from certain water Right, fountains. and we talk about this and this, uh, you know, I think this novel goes on to the Jim Crow era, mm-hmm. I believe. And, you know, it, every, there isn't like a stark cutoff date, right? right? So it's just like some of us who's listening and, right, and are our parents were alive during Jim Crow. So it's like you're just one generation away or you, you know what I'm saying? You're in that, basically that same generation in times, in terms of the lawful uh, enactment of segregation. Like that's, it's not that long ago. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. So when we think of a story like this and back to what you were saying about, you know, if you have no rights, you know, The folks who were enslaved, they had no rights. Yeah. They had no rights that uh, were, you know, bound to be respected. You know, as we know from like the Dred Scott case and um, and other legal uh, decisions that happened at that time. But it was it was just wrong. So, yeah. So do you know the other people? look at her as crazy or you know having some sort of mental issues and unaware of their own right right and we just get to a time where it's, it seems like to be like a buzzword though but just our trauma and our you know trauma everything is trauma now but right their traumas not even thinking about their own traumas mm-hmm. right they're just like oh man because they undoubtedly had their own but when you look at Setha, it's just like, dang, she's way out there, right? Because, yeah. you know. Because she did this thing. Yeah. Right? And because it was one of the things, it was like, it, 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 it embarrassed the family, right? They had a mark on them after this happened. It was public, you know. But when you think about what about all the private trauma? What about all the things that are not exposed and laid bare this way for Setha after she um, did that to Beloved that, you know, what what about that? Hmm. Because, you know, it's it, it, like the other people surely in the town who were looking at her crazy because, you know, it was all of these kind of catty gossiping women. And the interesting thing that I feel about this story and how it ends is that in the end, it is the same people who had talked bad about you, the same people who need who essentially needed to have some level of mercy on her to see that, you know, because. Paul D leaves right after he and, you know, beloved been getting it on and beloved is, you know, pregnant and carrying on. Yeah. And, and they need to come and exercise the demons out this house in their minds. Right. Because and you Denver know, was gone. Right. And D- Denver wasn't gone. Well, Denver was left. still there, but she was suffering. She was working for somebody else yeah. for one of the ladies. And the lady was like, well, you know, Denver what's going on. And then Denver, is she, you know, and then the lady realizes I need to gather the hens and we need to go over there and we need to pray this demon up out that house. For our, you know, to like come to the rescue of Setha and her daughter, but really more so for Denver's sake than for, uh, you know, for Setha, I think. Because, you know, they really judged. They continue to probably judge Setha, but they talked about him like a dog. But at the end, it was the women who had dogged Setha out in their terrible looks and all of that. You know, it was those women who came to her rescue in the end and essentially prayed you know beloved in the flesh away i don't know because maybe it's sort of like we don't want that coming over to us right too 
you yeah. know, it's spreading like the domino, <laughs> the yeah. domino effect. Like, what's going on over there? Because think about it. When we talk about the deliverance, people are like, don't watch that. It brings this stuff into your house. You this know what true. I'm saying? This so that true. could be part of it. We can be a superstitious people. <laughs> we can be. Where it's like, all right, we got to go over there because this could corrupt the entire town. You know, but. But a big part of it wasn't like, let me stay away for the for my safety and yours. You know, it was just look at that. She's despicable, you know, because yeah. what she did was just what she did was outrageous. Yeah. Who does that? Because I mean, you know, I, I jokingly said to you that I probably wouldn't use the word infanticide in this <laughs> Bruh. in this videos about this movie. But really, that's what it was. And how do we judge Susan Smith? Remember that lady, Susan Smith, the white lady back in the day? The who said, racist one. <laughs> yeah. Who I said that a black man that. had stole her kids. But in reality, she went and took her two little babies and put them in the car and then pushed it in a lake. I'm saying do whatever them. you do, but say they white my gosh well like, i'm saying that's crazy like yeah. the idea that you did that is crazy so how do you take the same act right oh mother's doing the may, same it act and it's so okay for one yeah. or not the other or you know that's the hard part of the well discussion. the part of it is when we could see what sort of situation like we undoubtedly i don't know maybe some people won't i look at the world and i say okay things are much better and people aren't in the same situation as they were in 1850s mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying yeah. so this these two people making decisions kind of like what i talked about uh is that there there's a a different sort of way that i judge the two right because of the situation at one person in versus the other and right because it's not just the act it's what could possibly lead you to this act. What was the world like? What was culture and society like at the time? So circumstances matter. Yeah. If you're in bondage and you are basically threatened with being in legal bondage that way, then yeah, I'm going to look at it differently. Right. Sort of like, uh, we were, we watched these trials, right. And we're talking about maybe somebody goes and they are locked up for something they didn't do. And now they have to do things that because they're locked up should you count that second crime right because they're charged with something else was what was what setha did murder to me no and see here's the thing because even when we talk about the woman um that inspired this story that tony morrison wrote in the blurb about her life they say that she murdered her child yeah so and i feel like okay clearly it was a homicide but was it a murder and did so, and I agree. I mean, I can't call what Seth did murder. Yeah, and is it euthanasia? Because uh, it's sort of like you you have this the, the some. I don't. It's know. not going to work out for you. Euthanasia right? and, like implies though. I feel in a way like that you that you know you're being put out of your misery, but the misery had yet to come, and it wasn't necessarily. It guaranteed. was there once it's on that doorstep, and they right here, and they got you. It's really uh -huh. what happened, right? Okay, if you were Seth, what would you have done? What? I don't know if I would have even thought. I don't know. I, I, I'm born I in a totally like, different time. I know, I know, I know. I just okay. can't answer So it. I feel like my first mind would not have been to do that. But I think my first mind might have been, first of well, all, you ain't going to be able because I would have been like, yeah, they're going to come looking because she and this is why she cared about who, you know, the little jingling bell on the thing to always look up the street to see who's coming. Right. So I would have made sure I had me some weapons. I mean, and maybe this okay. is the case of I would I would I would have yeah, never been What me. is happening but, in your mind for you to be able to decide all these things? Right. Well, because, panic for her. Right. Exactly. So if we're talking about her mental capabilities at that point and all she'd endure it and the time that you're in and all that it was like <laughs> how how is a decision being made and all this other stuff right that's so under her control or circumstances yours. i feel like would have made me um 
prepare myself in a way it, it I, the circumstances make you a different person like there are things in my life that have happened to me that turn me into a different person than i was before they happened. were you in bondage with all these stuff happening it doesn't matter and all i'm this talking about just the idea okay. right you okay. know like just th th so no i wasn't in bondage so but what i'm saying in this situation is i feel like i would have maybe just done something different yeah yeah you know. like what i'm thinking is that don't mean that i wouldn't have crashed out what I'm saying is my crash out would, I believe, maybe have been to be like, you might be taking me back, but you might have to kill me because I'm trying to kill you. Not my children in that situation. Yeah, I, maybe. You know, I, I don't know. I mean, it's, I think a, it's, it's a complete the same way speculation. Of people, yeah, I think of it the same way of people say, I would have had to been dead. They wouldn't which have is, done this. I would have ran which, away. Which is what I just said a minute or two ago. Like, it might be that, right? You know? So your 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 position is that it's impossible, really, kind of, to even really accurately speculate on where you would have gone. Yeah, how do I know? Would I have ran away or what? I don't know. I ain't been in no position like that. It sounds good for me to be like, yeah, I would have done this, this, and that, you know. But yeah. Well, I just so won't I don't even judge because... Setha for what she did. I'm gonna be clear about that. I'm just saying that. It also took a lot of guts to do what Setha did. And I'm questioning if I got them kind of guts is what I'm saying. Hmm. So, you know, it might look like on the surface I'm saying th that, uh, oh, absolutely, I could never be capable of that. But at the same time, I'm also saying that, like, that's next level, like, either insanity or guts to be able to say, this is where the rubber meets the road. I'm not going because I agree with you. It's real easy to say what you would or wouldn't have done back then. But what I am saying is I like to believe about myself. And I, and, and I mean, I like to believe. I, I feel like I would have been trying to, um, you know, do something where I'm taking one of y'all with me. You know, or two or however many I can take. Yeah, and but I think was, that most people today would think that. Or you say they right. would like to believe that they would do that, right? So, I think, <laughs> yeah, I just can't end. I don't but know. in the end, maybe I wouldn't have done anything except crying and being on the back of that wagon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> With my four kids. That's you know, what a like, lot of people don't want to believe about themselves, right? That, oh, I would have been Nat Turner the day I was born, you know? But, okay. Yeah, but I mean, what what I think stipulates that is the likelihood, <laughs> you know, if you won't stand up to your boss at work or you won't talk back to folks or you look down to the ground and you can't even look yeah. folks in the eye today in 2024, I really don't think you're going to be Nat Turner back then. That's just my thought. But. Oh, it's just it's a tough... But some people think they're doing that and they're not, too. You know what I'm saying? They'd be like. I show up late sometimes <laughs> <laughs> and the penalties aren't the same. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, you ain't making your own rules. You ain't, but we we operate under the, within the world that we live in. And that's just how it happens. Right. You don't want to lose your job. I don't want to lose my job. Right. It's going to cost money to do things. So we are compromising our values all the time. And when your life is on the line, that's totally different. And there are probably plenty of times that you've done something so that you, that wasn't as critical as your life that you compromised on. Yeah. Yeah, like, the, I don't know. Like, these things, they make me think. Yeah, I don't <sighs> like, I in don't really think I usually put myself in the position of the characters. Because I just think about the choice. Anytime self-assessment is just you always going to just lie to yourself, right? And mm. what's really true is what you think about other people. Mm. That tells me more about you than what you claim about yourself. So, and I'm not saying that I do this because of that reason, but I just, that's just how I think. I just... I know that I observe more of other people and maybe be able to assess them better than I can assess myself because you're 
built with the built in bias. Yeah, right. I mean, I agree with you there for sure. You know, it's it, which is why self-reflection and whatever is so important. You know what I mean? Like because because where I was leading with all this is to say that you know, personality types matter. Assuming, let's just say I'm transported to that time and I'm in Seth's position and I don't know why I feel the need because maybe because I've played this scenario over and over my head because I'm saying to myself, could I have done what she did? And if I could, what does that mean about me a person? And if I couldn't, what, would, what does that mean? If I couldn't do what she did, Mm. What does that mean about me? You know, and like these are this is why I'm asking the question. This is why I want to why I wanted to figure it out. Right. And why I've played it over and over again. Like, did I have the guts to be Setha? Mm. Or or would I have been on the back of the wagon or would I have done something different? Well, just be grateful you know. that you don't have to. But OK, so I agree with you. I'm grateful that I'm I so don't glad have to I be, don't have to make these decisions uh, in I'm, my life. See, this is Thank where, you to all my ancestors who got peace. us to here. You definitely you, you bring me the peace with with suggesting that because, you know, I'm not built that way to to not obsess about the scenario. Um, but you're right, like I'm incredibly grateful that I don't have to make that decision. But maybe it's not that decision I have to make. It's and probably nothing to that level, though. So well, be grateful. I'm grateful. So right? so so can I be grateful and also say, who am I, and and what would I be when when the pressure? You're is way applied? weaker than those people, You're and right. I say that about everybody You're because right. we don't live in those times. Under well, those you circumstances. haven't been strengthened to yeah. be that strong. So, <laughs> so you so don't. You would never is, have the guts of the person back then. <laughs> I'm gonna None fold. of you, if you listening and you think you do, you're wrong. You don't. <laughs> That's just <laughs> it. You would never match up. This is why I love how you see the world sometimes. You know because. Th that statement remember, alone just remember it uh back. leave the world behind yes. he was like i'm a weak weak man <laughs> <laughs> but you know that's that's just it but but and out of that right out of that understanding and realization cuz i don't think when you say you're far weaker you're right like i would like to be somebody who could be strong enough just to think, do what ultimately i think is the right thing according to my <laughs> creed but it's probably a quite it's probably a few people. Right. And I'm talking about in our society, you know, there's different societies. Right. But how we are. So they didn't have AC, bro. Yeah. Some people might be like, I work outside at the end of the day. You go home and you sit in the AC. You ain't built like that. You know what I'm saying? So you try to do the things these people was doing, like Paul D. You ain't no more of a man than Paul D. <laughs> Paul, Paul D, D is a you know what I'm saying? Like, around. just think about what they went through. And then the men and women, they show the the scars on their backs. Yeah, we didn't talk about you, that. But Setha says she yeah. had a, a tree on her back. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? The worst happened to you, you get waxed or something. I guess, you know, you have the childbirth the same. But what about having childbirth right after getting whooped like this? OK, so I could worry. I, I, I could I could infuse some things. One thing that does happen. Is DV that happens a lot. Yeah. Even now, you know, we've seen the Cassie tape. We you know, there mm -hmm. I mean, that happens to women a lot and yeah. some men, too. But it happens to women a lot. And that is. You know. That can lead to the end, too. Yeah, but out in the open like it was. No, which maybe makes it worse because don't nobody know what's happening. Oh, I guess. Yeah. I don't know. But I, I don't want to say what I want to say because, you know, the times we live in. But what you mean? I still think it was worse back in the day. Well, it definitely okay. was it worse. Happens it happens. And you in the AC was worse. when it it's happening. It definitely was you know worse. Oh, my God. <laughs> but it definitely was worse for sure. It yeah. definitely, like, I'm not even arguing that it was worse. But I'm thinking about things that are still pretty doggone bad today. Oh, Not yeah. saying that what that is is worse than back then. Yeah, it's things that are definitely bad. But see, the thing is, is that the bondage part of it is just doesn't go away. Right. So. It's just I don't know. There may be some situations. That are pretty bad, right, because inevitably somebody gonna bring up, but you didn't think about all these thousands of women and girls who are trafficked or whatever, yeah. you know. 
but I mean, and that is true. You know, I just think that it was in it. A, it was legal back in the, you know back at that point in history. It would they wouldn't even be calling it that, and and it just was so much. It's so yeah, much and more it was widespread. so widespread and accepted. Yeah, I'm not saying by everybody, but you know what I mean. The prevailing authority <laughs> allowed it, right? So there was not much recourse or nothing. It just happened and happened, and that's it. And then you just got to deal with that. And ain't no hope of getting out of it or nothing. That's just it. One of y'all know, I'm sure, because this just came to my mind. But one of y'all do know for sure. And I can't remember. Was it The Bluest Eye or was it Sula by Toni Morrison? Where I believe a mother took her son's life in one of those books. Hmm. But it was an adult son. I can't, you know, I get these stories confused because it's been a while since I read either one. But like the son was doing all kind of stuff in the book, you know. He he was just doing all kind of stuff, and it was sort of like the situation in uh, Jungle Fever. Wasn't that Jungle Fever where the daddy decided he was gonna take out his son? Yeah. Um, same kind of thing like that. Except on film, when I've seen it, it's only it tends to be the men who do it because that father off of Jungle Fever wasn't the only father who did it. Hmm. And then we've had real life so, scenarios of a parent doing it, but not for necessarily good reasons. Oh yeah, but. Yeah, yeah, that was just weird. Marvin Gaye's dad. Let us know if you want us to do a video about Spike Lee and his uh, relationship to religion in his films. I don't even want to talk about the sweet blood of Jesus. What <laughs> I was think the name that of that? was a was remake, that the name of the movie? Yeah, the sweet blood of Jesus. That's a and remake Red of Hook Penny Summer and Hess, too, I think, though. right? Red, Red, Red Hook Summer, Red too. Hook Summer, yeah, mm-hmm. all those, like... And Crooklyn, and yeah, we could go, we could yeah, run it down. He, Spike Lee was making a few statements, so I, you know, <laughs> but it's weird because we really, it, I don't know why we really haven't covered a Spike Lee film. Um, definitely not on this channel, but we should. Yeah, I just don't know which one. Go to the comments and let us know what Spike Lee movie you'd want to hear us talk yeah. about. I feel like y'all gonna say Crooklyn. But... I feel like that too. <laughs> so if you notice, we don't really do many biopics, so you know, right. I don't know how we would cover Malcolm X, but we could, you know, but we don't really do those. Yeah, because like I don't like any air of gossip or anything like that where it would be like we're judging a, an actual human being and their decisions. Although I would like to do but, the Whitney Houston movie so we could roast the fact of all yeah. the stuff they got wrong. Does but. it <laughs> does it matter if the person is well known? Right. Because like Joe Clark <laughs> Isn't as well known. Well, right? we did that and, other movie, and but that was loosely based. The the, the deliverance, yeah, the deliverance. Yeah. But I'm just like, can we take it as kind of view it as fiction? Let's just look at this story and talk about the story. Man, I just don't want to badly judge a, a real human being that did real things, and you know. And, yeah. and and because the 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 movies don't always they're not always accurate, and right. But I'm saying when I do it, I could be like, okay, I'm just looking at the story, right? Mm-hmm. I can do it. But the I don't know would the audience get it. That's probably the thing. Yeah, good question. Because the audience would be like, oh, you bashing him, but maybe Joe Clark needs to never mind. Well, you, can, you know what? Let's not judge people off the last part of their life when, you know, <laughs> when different things could be going on. But, um, but yeah, so I, I don't know. Like, I feel like I still just have so many things I would want to talk about with Beloved because we didn't even really talk. We can't even get into Baby Suggs and what she was saying to them. But go back and look at the scenes with Baby Suggs because, like, when I watched that and listened to what she was telling them, giving them that up that they needed to be able to live in the world that they were living in back then man like hmm. this is just i mean it was a good movie if you knew if you had read the book oh huh. yeah but we talked about all this but how significant is that part of the story to the story besides it being the ghost origin story The ghost origin story is the story. You know, it's so weird to me that everything that happened before Beloved showed up, I didn't even care about what happened when Beloved was there. I wanted to know why she was there. Huh. 
You know what I'm saying? I wanted to know, like, okay, so the baby showed up. Why was she there? Okay, she had some memories that seemed like her previous life. And why she did she remember- have to walk over there and all that, too? Oh, man. And you know why she had all them bugs on her? Like, it was just a... But, you know, to me, that just is part of... I mean, it's almost like, what do they call it? Afro um, surrealism. Yeah. It, it was almost like that before that genre was really a thing. Well, it's stuff that leads to it, right? You know, the evolution. And they might not be giving Toni Morrison her credit for that. I mean, I have to look it up. Some of y'all, I already know, get the whole Afro surrealism thing. Like, was that what they were calling it back when Toni Morrison was writing her books? Because when I tell you, if you have not read a Toni Morrison book, even if not this one, so if you read The Bluest Eye, it starts out with, here is the house. It is green and white. And then, you know, it goes on for a paragraph or two. But let me just get to beyond that, a couple paragraphs down. It says, quiet as it's kept, there were no marigolds in the fall of 1941. We thought at that time that it was because Pecola was having her father's baby that the marigolds did not grow. Okay, the first real lines in the book, The Bluest Eye, say something like this. Hmm. Like, let me tell you, if you have never read a Toni Morrison book, just go ahead and start reading The Bluest Eye or go listen to it somewhere on Audible or somewhere you can find it. You could even find the text online. You know, I, hopefully, maybe if you are able to purchase it, that might be better. At least it supports her uh is stayed at this point, but excuse me. Hmm. We thought at that time that it was because Pecola was having her father's baby that the marigolds did not grow in the fall of 1941. Like when you start a book like that, really, what are we, what are we to do? Hmm. But I'll just leave it at that and just kind of give that little bit of, what do you think of that line? Um, I think it can draw an interest. Yeah, you need to know the story. Yeah, it definitely. I mean, but it's outrageous. Yeah, but it's more about that they're painting a picture of despair, right? Even, but then you throw in the realism in it too, the straightforward stuff of having a father's baby, right? But the rest is a picture of despair right and you could probably insert any reason into that Hmm. line and i guess i don't know the choice to do that but yeah and then just like her writing is amazing Mm -hmm. like tony morrison like and let me just finish out that first little paragraph so i'll start again quiet is as kept there were no marigolds in the fall of 1941 We thought at the time that it was because Pecola was having her father's baby that the marigolds did not grow. A little examination and much less melancholy would have proved to us that our seeds were not the only ones that did not sprout. Nobody's did. Not even the gardens fronting the lake showed marigolds that year. But so deeply concerned were we with the health and safe delivery of Pecola's baby that we could think of nothing but our own magic. If we planted the seeds and said the right words over them, they would blossom and everything would be all right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, I mean, come on. If you're not reading, you know, just, just. Yeah. This is why, you know, I don't know. If I brought it up. This is why this one rapper said that Tupac wasn't lyrical because they don't know. And I brought up something similar to this, right? Mm. Talking about the personification of, and the imagery of using the idea of seeds, right? Mm-hmm. that's what she done here and she's but talking that's about why you should magic read and, and our own things. magic yeah just like i you know and i think that's lost too now i'm not saying that people aren't writing like this but in our uh desire to have it like that right so we get people who can express themselves like that and we don't want it we want it straight out, right? Let Why me don't we want make it? Make my though? coochie stretch or whatever the line. Is. What? <laughs> You're talking about even though this, <laughs> just how things are bluntly said, and you know yeah. the way that it was said before it was, you know, oh, somebody's clever with the tongue, artful, now, yeah. yeah. Even the songs, right? Yeah. You know, but like 
when when this is when I when I have this just this paragraph that we read and then I think about all of the other like lo, I don't even want to say low vibrational but like to translate it to today's language they'd call it like low vibrational you know content and movies and shows that we watch and you know, I just think about all of the just the salacious stuff that's salacious just for being salacious and not even being artful. Yeah. You know, um, I know the Tubi movie is very popular these days, but like things that just don't have a whole lot of substance. Yeah. Give it to me in an artful way. Right. And a good story. Yeah. So, you know, we don't went way off the yep. path of beloved, but hopefully you have grown a love for at least in peaked interest in Toni Morrison. You know, we, we're not being sponsored to say it, but like Toni Morrison is just like A1. Hmm. Yep. So if you made it this far, type what's right in the comments so we'll know you're one of the real ones who stick around. And don't forget, let us know. Should we be doing more videos on Beloved? We can do maybe some scene breakdowns. If that's what you want, go ahead and tell us what scenes in the comments. If you're interested in full breakdowns of scenes from Beloved, then become a member and you'll be able to enjoy those videos as they come out. Otherwise, be sure to check out the video that's on the screen right now.